Hello, today I'm going to show you how to use parameters and return types to make your methods really useful. Um, so what this program is going to do is it's going to ask the user for a word and a number and then it will display that word that certain number of times. So if they enter elephant and five it will show them the word elephant five times. And to use and to get user input and output, I'm going to use the J option pane class. So I've imported that up here. I have pretty much just an empty project set up other than that. Uh, so let's start with the main method. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is display or declare a method, uh, sorry, declare a variable called word. Okay, and I'm going to declare another variable called num times. Uh, to get input from the user, I can do something like this, word equals joptionpane.show input dialog, and then in brackets here, the prompt, so enter a random word. So I, I could do that, and when I run this program, it will prompt the user to enter a random word, they can put something in, and that's it. Uh, however, it's kind of annoying typing this all out, Jabshin pane and the prompt. So what we're going to do instead is define a method that will do that for us. So up here at the class level, let's declare public static string. I'm going to call this input string prompt. Okay, so I've declared a new method and the return type here is string. So when this method's done, it's going to pass a string back to wherever it was invoked. This method accepts one parameter. This is a formal parameter. It has a method or a data type declaration, and it has a variable name. So we would say that the method input has one parameter. We can declare methods with more than one parameter, and we're going to get to that a little bit later. So all this method is going to do is it's going to essentially replicate what we've done below. But in this case, rather than putting a certain string in the prompt here, I'm going to use the parameter that was passed in. And then I'm going to return message. So I can now, so what this, this is going to do is it's going to use JOption pane to display whatever string was passed to the method and whatever string was inputted by the user into the message box will get returned. So rather than have this all now, what I can type is just uh, input. You got to spell it right. So word equals input. So when I run this program, it's going to look exactly the same. Okay, but I now have this nice method that I can use to get input from the user and not have to type that whole J option pane thing. So what actually happens here is when I hit run, the main method starts to in, to execute. Once we get down to line 21, this half of the line executes first. So this is a method call, and I call the input method, and I pass it this data. So this is a string. Uh, this is the actual parameter. So this actual parameter here, enter a random word, gets actually transmitted up into our input method, and it gets stored in the formal parameter. In this case, the form parameter is called prompt. So then my input method starts to execute and the prompt gets displayed by J option pane and whatever the user inputs gets stored in message and that gets returned so this input method essentially returns a string whatever string is entered gets stored in word sound good all right let's keep going uh, so what I'm going to, going to do now is I'm going to use that same input method to get the number of times that the user wants to see their word. Uh, 
Okay. So this doesn't quite work, and the reason for that is because of the data types. So num times is an int. However, input returns a string. Now I've asked the user to enter a number here, so what I can do is I can take this string and I can directly parse it. So I'm going to use integer dot parse int. And I'll pass the parse int method the result of my input call. So whatever the user enters gets parsed and stored in num times. So I've reused this method twice now uh, just to make coding a little bit easier for me. Now the last thing I'm going to do now is display this word this many times. And to do that, I'm going to write one more method. This method's going to be void. It's not going to return anything. It's, however, going to accept two parameters, a string and an integer. So we would say that the display method has two parameters. Um, it's not going to return anything because we're going to do the output directly in our display method. This return type here can be any variable type we like. So it can be string, it could be int, uh, it could be double, uh, it can even be objects like you can return arrays or buffered readers or anything like that. Uh, or if you don't want to return anything, then you can just make it void. You don't always need to return things from your methods. So here in our display method, what we're going to do is we're going to start with another string. I'm going to call it out. And then we are going to use a for loop to add our s string to the output string a certain number of times. So I'm going to type for tab. And so this for loop will repeat num times. So if num is 5, the loop will repeat the code inside of it 5 times. And to my output string, I'm going to add s, which is the string that I want to display and a new line. Once this loop has run and I've added s to my output string however many times I want, I'm going to use joptionpane.show message dialog to display my output. So nothing's going to happen yet other than the input because I haven't actually invoked this method. It's been defined, but nothing happens until it gets invoked. So down here in my main method, after we've gotten the word and the number of times from the user, let's go ahead and invoke the display method. Okay, so we type the name of the method and then in brackets the parameters that we want to pass to the method. So in this case, I would like to pass the word and the num times. These are the actual parameters that get transmitted into my formal parameters here and utilized by my method that I've defined. Now it's important that the types of the actual parameters and the formal parameters match, okay, and the order has to match too. So I couldn't call this with num times and then word because that would not match my formal parameter list. The names don't matter at all, just the data types. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So banana is the most random word I can think of. Let's see it 15 times. There we go, 15 bananas. And there you have it. That's how you can define methods that return data and that accept data as parameters when you do this, your methods become a lot more useful because you can customize them much more easily. Thanks for watching.